There is no better time than right now to prepare for the future, especially when it comes to estate planning. But it can be a complicated process, and there's a few things you need to keep in mind when it comes to making plans. So joining us today to talk about that is attorney Dean Campbell from the law office of Dean A. Campbell, LLC in Georgetown. Dean, thank you so much for coming in. Thank we appreciate you. My that pleasure. Today. All right, let me set you up with um, a situation. Let's say that I'm getting older, and I need some assistance writing checks and paying my bills and things like that. Well, to do that, I'm going to need to put somebody else's name on the account, but I need to be careful about who I put on their family or friend? Or well, the best way to handle that is either uh, not put them on the account and use a power of attorney, or make sure that you know what you're signing when you go to the bank to put their name on the account. One of the common problems uh, that I've encountered uh, in my litigation practice is uh, the, the mom or dad's getting older, needs help signing checks, uh, puts daughter on the bank account, uh, and the problem is the bank account documents that are signed usually refer to the account being uh, with right of survivorship, meaning that at the time of death, that account passes to the other person on the account, the joint survivor. Now, you've actually seen a situation like that it's many, many times occur recently with a son and a mother, where well, that wasn't um, that wasn't so much a bank account. It was uh, involved uh, real property. I believe it was four parcels of real property, and a rather sizable uh, stock account, brokerage account, uh, where the property was retitled with a deed uh, with right of survivorship. Uh, the brokerage account was retitled with uh, right of survivorship. Yeah. And this lady had assets probably close to a million dollars. And had this not been caught by other family members, uh, when she passed away, the son who was on the accounts and the deeds would have taken everything. And the other three, other two children uh, who should have taken would have gotten nothing. And that was probably not the intent of the mom. That was not the intent of the mom. She, her intent was that the estate be split evenly. Uh, fortunately, we were able to get a, a temporary restraining order, freeze the bank accounts, and everything got resolved. Taken care of. Well, that's good news there. Um, now, talk to us a little bit about uh, getting our estate planning in order. What's what's involved here? Well, the best way to get uh, the estate plan in order, of course, is talk to an attorney. And there are. Many horror stories I see because that simple process is missed and not followed. Uh, doing a will is not difficult at all. It's not that terribly expensive either. Um, but the, if the will's not completed, uh, there are some really bad things that can happen. Yeah. Well, for example, I had a um, had a lady walk in my office one day. Uh, she had been raised by her stepfather from a ba from a baby. Only father she ever knew was very close to him. Had uh, she was probably in her 30s or 40s this time, had even uh, helped take care of him in the older years. He never had a will, and he never adopted her. Okay. When he did not, when he passed away without a will, the property in his estate passed by what's called intestate succession, meaning it follows the laws of the state of Delaware. Because she was not adopted, because there was not a will, because she was not a blood relative, she got absolutely nothing. And the sad thing about that particular case was that he had one son who was estranged, living in California. They never talked and hadn't talked in years, and uh, the son ended up with the estate. Really? Yes. Very How horrible. About that? It was a uh, very difficult telling her the, what, what was about happened. to happen. Yes. Okay. Now I, I want to want to clarify here real quick that uh, Dean, you are a practicing lawyer in uh, in Delaware. That's right. And of course, every state differs to some extent. Correct. So then, the best suggestion for somebody that has questions about their particular state find an attorney that's local to you. Okay, uh, let me go back to the story you just told. Mm -hmm. If I find myself in a situation like that, well, why don't, I'm just gonna take a notepad. I want my son to have this, I want my wife to have this, there's my name, there's my will. That's not a will. Really? And, and I, you know, like you just said, I'm, I'm a Delaware attorney, I don't know the laws in Maryland and Virginia. Right. I'm not licensed in either state. But uh, in Delaware, uh, holographic wills, which is what you just described, yeah. are not recognized. Uh, in particular, wills have to be executed with a uh, certain formality uh, in writing, uh, witnessed by two people. Everybody has to be in the presence of one another as they sign. Uh, we usually use what's called a self-proving affidavit uh, that establishes who the witnesses were and, and what the formality w involved, uh, how it occurred, um, and that creates a will. Uh, just sitting, sitting down, writing out on a piece of paper and signing it does not constitute a will. So everything that you just talked about there helps make sure that somebody else didn't write it for me, that it's an honest-to-goodness 
real life document. Correct. Correct. I believe that's the intent of the law. Yes. Okay. So let me switch gears on here a little bit. Okay. Um, in Delaware, um, civil unions. The the civil union statute was just brought into effect in Delaware. What exactly does this now mean as far as the states and such? Well, it does have a, a huge effect on the states. Uh, I mean, obviously, the best way uh, to ensure that your estate's handled properly is to have a will uh, prepared in advance. However, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, when there is no will in place, uh, the intestate laws take over. And what the new civil union statute says essentially is that if this couple is, uh, are, are connected in a civil union and they go through the process, and that's a very important point, they do have to go through the, the process to make it a legal union. Mm -hmm. uh, if they do that, then the partner is recognized as if that partner were a, a spouse, in a uh, traditional relationship. So then all the laws for a spouse would apply to the Correct. civil union. Correct. So for example, where um, under the intestate statutes, the spouse obviously takes the largest part of the estate. Right. Um, under a civil union, the surviving partner uh, would take the largest part of the estate if there's no will. Gotcha. Dean Campbell, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. It's been Appreciate a pleasure. Appreciate that. Uh, an attorney in Delaware. Now, if you would like to contact attorney Dean A. Campbell, it's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to DelmarvaLife.com uh, and you can click on the show tab. Well, coming up next on Delmarva Life, Lisa disappeared and apparently she's gone to play at the circus. The Ringley Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Barnum Bash kicks off tonight in Salisbury. At least it's gone to the Wycombe Queensland <laughs> Civic Center with a preview. Delmarva Life, life at its best here on Delmarva.